We're down here before the tractor, so I obviously rode ahead with the four-wheelers, so I'm just going to spend a little bit of time and show you. So we're planting forage peas, Austrian winter peas, comeback kid, which is clover, alfalfa, and chicory, I think. And then we're planting the primetime brassica blend. So here comes the tractor, so we're going to disc this up just a little bit more. It looks pretty good, but we're going to do it just a little bit more. We got uh, rain coming, so that's good. And hopefully this food plot's going to do really well this year. So let's see how it goes. Just got the food plot done and I don't know it's gonna be kind of hard so this kind of box right here oops this box right here is brassica this kind of strip right here of clay is clover because I know the clover will grow uh, faster and better uh, clover can grow in a lot of different soil types so I put it in the clay just to make sure the brassica in case it didn't grow in here clay spot that uh, we wouldn't be risking the brassica's growth then we got a lot of forage peas back here forage pea and winter pea combined back here and this kind of little strip right here then we got mainly brassica on this back strip so and then on this strip coming towards me is mainly clover so we got a lot of seed left we have enough seed for next year so I'm pretty happy about that and I'll come down here probably in two weeks kind of see how everything's growing but the brassicas take a while to grow and we actually planted late because um, because it's been really uh, wet down here so I mean, if you, I put my other camera up right here, and you could see the tractor tires just spinning and spinning in the um, the food plot, and I was a little worried there for a second, but it got through it. We got this all disked up. We got it all seeded, so come back in a couple weeks, and then we'll see how the growth is doing. We got to plant our browse plot back here. That was my last video, browse plot. Gotta plant that in the red osier dogwood. And so yeah, got this done. Gonna go, then we're gonna set stands up here in a couple weeks. And then we're gonna go work on the browse plot. And then by then, it'll probably be time to hunt. So I'm really excited for the spot. And next year, we're doing the no-till method. So I'm really excited for that. I'm gonna be planting once this is all done, I'm going to redisc it and replant it with buckwheat. Then once the buckwheat grows for about six to eight weeks, you plant brassica and forage peas, oats, stuff like that into the buckwheat while it's standing. And then the same day, you use a cultipacker or something just to lay it down, even run over it with a four-wheeler. And do that and lay the buckwheat over the seed so the seed will be on the ground and the buckwheat will still be standing so you lay it over with the four-wheeler or your whatever you use to lay it down you spray you spray glyphosate on it kills the buckwheat 
but glyphosate is a post-emergent, so it does not kill your uh, seeds. And then once the buckwheat dies, um, well, actually, probably before the buckwheat dies, your brassica, oats, peas, I think, will grow up within your dead, uh, dead buckwheat. And maybe you're thinking, well, why plant buckwheat? Why don't just kind of do this? Well, buckwheat increases the soil pH, and it um, it's kind of like a cover crop for weeds, so that way you have no weeds in here, depending on how thick your crop is of buckwheat. So buckwheat does have a reason. It's not just a plant to lay over the seed. It does have a reason throughout the spring. And if you if you research that, watch videos on that, it's really cool. You can see pictures. And, but buckwheat, I don't know if it gives any really value to the deer. They might be able to eat on it a little bit, even possibly bed in it, but I'm not really sure. I think they can eat it, though. So we're going to see how this does later. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks to come check this out.